All right, all right, man. What is up, Planet Xbox Podcast, episode 16. That's I think that's where we're on, episode 16. And uh, I hate to do this to you guys, but I love to do it to you guys at the same time, man. This week's been crazy. A couple weeks ago, we missed the podcast because we were playing Starfield. Last week, we had a podcast, but it wasn't exclusive to Patreon. It went straight to BG's channel because it was our embargo, and we talked about our reviews and our thoughts. Now that the dust has settled, review scores is out, player counts are out, everyone's reaction is here, and um, we're going to just just dive into the madness, the good, the bad, the ugly of Starfield. I got my co-hosts, AJ, Gaming Addict, Lord Addict. What's up? Use my government name. I just use it spilled out. You know why? Because I tried to tell Siri to call it Addict. And it doesn't recognize addict. So I have to say, hey, you don't know how, because you missed about 12 of my calls. Sorry. Stop. <laughs> you hear that? All right. So um, when, so the thing is, so I have to say, uh, I don't want to say it because she's going to do it. So, but I have to say, hey, yeah. yeah. So, and it happens all the time. And, it, and the way you want to know how it pronounces it, hmm. it says, okay, calling age, Laura Attic. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh man but it doesn't recognize but it doesn't recognize addict by itself um but man let's get into today's show man we got we got a, we, we got a great week coming up man but uh shout out to bg shout out to weapon will playing xbox we in here you've beaten starfield the formal uh like formally you've beaten the story i know a lot yeah. of us put in a ton of hours and a lot of our impression were videos that were put out were impressions mine was a review and i still stick by what i said in that review it's only gotten better but uh now that you formally have you know completed the main quests uh what are your thoughts man what are, where are we at i think starfield i stand by everything i said last week you know obviously it it, it it is a, a fantastic Bethesda game, uh, but it's still flawed. And, you know, I think a lot of people are sitting here acting like the game had to be amazing or, or, or not good. Like, it, there was no, like, middle ground. This game falls in that middle ground. It's a mm -hmm. fun time. You know, I would put in terms of quality, you know, it could have been a little bit better in terms of how they did certain things on the world side. Yep. But even though with the issues I had with the game, there wasn't one time me playing this game that I that I considered putting it down. So, and, and you know, kudos to that because they, they're, that's not easy. <laughs> uh, you, you've seen, you've seen it a few times. So I'll drop a game just because like the music's not grabbing me too much. Like uh, this, this, this game, it captivated me on multiple angles, especially the space combat. I thought the space combat was uh very clean and you know, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, I haven't put the game down since and I've literally decided like I put the obviously and that's this game has had an impact on a lot of things. It's had an impact of me, um, you know, getting to the podcast on time has an impact on me putting out content uh, uh, regularly and it has had an impact on me just even work like I'm usually proactive, do a couple things for work from home and um, while when I, while I'm off. And, and and I've been just utilizing my time um, like, you know, I do what I got to do while I'm home and then any other free spare time. I'm, you know, I'm putting those hours in in the star field. People don't believe me when I say I like the game. They think I'm capping because it's an Xbox exclusive. We went over this many podcasts ago. Um, if the Xbox drops a game that I don't like, I mean, I'm, I'm not in, I'm not entitled to play it's not it's not like i'm going to play just because i mean we've already seen I, this i haven't gone through redfall I, I agree that xbox can can definitely deliver experiences that you're not feeling mm -hmm. but we got to admit that if it's got the xbox signal you'll be willing to give it a try more than others i'll give a game a try i'll always give a game a try but am i going to see it through like for example did i say i'm not going to see age of empires oh, hold on, wait, wait, through no, hold on we we, we got to address the elephant in the room yeah the Bethesda hating ass kids move tweets from like two or three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. what, 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 what do you plead? Um, I plead that those were relevant for the times that I tweeted those uh, that I tweeted those stuff. They were relevant. I had no interest. What, what would you say is different from now and then? They have made better games since then. 
<laughs> they've made better games since this. The, the whole entire uh, studio uh, um, team of Bethesda pub- publishing have made better games since then. Uh, I've been. I thought uh, when Deathloop came out, I liked it. I enjoyed Ghostwire Tokyo more than I thought I would. Um, I Hi-Fi Rush uh, was a very good game, and Starfield I think is game of the year. Um, so they've made better games. Doom has always been like good and whatnot. Wolfenstein has always been good, but I've enjoyed the uh, releases. They only had they've literally since they've been under the Xbox wing, they've released uh, five games. Hold on, Hi-Fi. Deathloop, uh, Ghostwire, Starfield, Redfall. They released five games. They're four and one. They're four and one. That's good. That 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 means they're 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 at like they're four. Yeah, yeah, they're four for five. They're ninety. They're shooting ninety percent, bro. Um, they're and and yes, like I and, and people forget and and they they just want to ignore it. But Anchor, me and Anchorman have history in this. My anti Minecraft, my anti Bethesda things came from the banter with Anchorman. These were two games Anchorman tried to get me to play early in my YouTube days was Minecraft and uh, Fallout. And I would use that to, you know, try to attack Anchorman and stuff like that. So I would say this, say something to trigger uh, to trigger him because he was a strong fan of uh, both brands. So, again, when the, the thing is. I've had like a respect for Bethesda. I remember the first time I went to E3 in 2017, that was my wife and I's favorite like event was Bethesda event. They had the best food, the best drinks, the best setup. It was a party and we enjoyed it, even though I didn't really care for any of the games that was at the show. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I know Evil Within was big at the time. Uh, I think Fallout 70, 27. Yeah, Fallout 77 was Fallout 76 at that show. Maybe. Yeah, so the thing is, I but I it's like you know I respected Bethesda, but um, I didn't care for any of the games at that time. And my complaints back then, or my banter back then, was legit for the time that it was. So, man, I, I have I don't have I, people keep throwing it in my face. I don't really care what I said in 2018. Don't really care what I said in 2014. I, I what I'm saying in 2023 is that Starfield is the best game to come out this year, and it's the Bethesda RPG that have broke me in and I'm enjoying it. Um, so the thing is, is that with this game, the way we've all you know played differently, I played, you know, obviously I, I kind of worked, I guess, outward in with I finished all the main, uh, not the main quest, but all the factions quests, uh, the Free Star Collective, the United Colonies, um, the Crimson Fleet and the Reunion. Uh, they all each one of those factions feel like a a game a, a, an isolated game in itself when you consider yeah, like the quality of the missions and so it's like like it's like I didn't I don't mind that I haven't like completed the main quest because they all had a legit like story uh story that took hours to complete each one of their quests took hours to com- uh to complete um and I and I just had I really had fun with it, had fun with the characters, loved the the rewards that I've gotten with it. And and like I said, I, I anticipate that I'll have the game beat uh within the next uh couple days for sure, honestly. Um, but I'm loving the game. Uh so Attic the reviews came out, opened up at like a an 87, and you know, obviously I thought it would be at a 90 for sure. Um, but can't predict how idiots will, you know, work in, in reality. So the game lands at the 87 after a couple of days after the people that, you know, Microsoft and Bethesda shafted out of review codes, they finally got their reviews in. They all they all made sure to give it a low score. Um, and that's what they did. And then you had somebody named Jim. What's his name? Jim Sterling. Do look like Sam Smith in a fucking hat. Um, gave it a, a four. Uh, so there's a lot of these reviews, uh, that happened with Starfield were like, look at me reviews. Like I felt like it was a competition of, uh, journalists who work for like big sites, um, preparing to launch their own platform. You know what I mean? Like, you know how back then we know the websites right now we know more of the individuals 
for these websites and it's because of something like this everybody wants to be the next uh what's that dill pickle dude with the glasses uh that pisses people off once a year he used to write for kotaku uh jason schreier yeah, jason yeah everybody's trying to like these journals these new journals are trying to be the next jason schreier so what they're doing is they're like you know what? i'm gonna go viral i'm gonna become infamous i work for a popular website a big game's coming out and my literally what i day uh, do or say about this game will hinge on its overall perception and that's what they did um i'm not a fan of, of the people that got to review the game the dude like the odd one out some random dude at ign gives it a seven um and his math ain't adding up the game spot gave it a seven uh uh, Jim Sterling gave, gives it a four. Uh, a podcast. I don't know why Metacritic allows podcasts to be a part of screen. They gave it a five after five hours of play. Like it said five hours. Yeah, they said it in their summary. Five hours of play. And um, that's where these companies are low key trying to sabotage. Yeah. So I, and the thing is, it's like. It's, it's a polarizing thing. It's, even though, believe it or not, majority of the reviews are still like overwhelmingly positive, but... Um, you wouldn't the, know that, though, because that's you, not you, just being shared on Twitter. Yeah, no, Twitter is uh, is very brashful against the game. There's a army of individuals who are working night and day to just keep reminding people uh, with negative views of the game uh, that they're, you know, posting only negative articles. They're only they're posting these, uh, you know, ugly ass screenshots, posting nothing but flaws. And, and that's what they've been doing there. Some of them are doing it, obviously, because it's making the money. Um, a lot of people are going to be getting a nice fat ass paychecks from Twitter um, with the engagements. And, and I don't blame them. And then you got the people that, you know, are just happy that this game didn't hit a 90 because uh because they don't they didn't want Xbox to have a better year than PlayStation. Um, people are, are forgetting that PlayStation has dropped nothing this year. Their only game this year will be Spider-Man 2 um, and uh, some VR fodder. Um, but Square Enix is virtually Gran Turismo, the movie and Gran Turismo, the movie. Right. So there's a lot of unnecessary hate that Starfield is getting. And um, and I felt like. I don't know why I feel the need to defend the game, and I think I can't. I think I'm going out of my way to defend the game because it's a game. It's su- it's it's a type of game that's not my type of game, and I don't know why. Like there's these games that come out right that I'll finally connect with, and it's like, damn, do I? Maybe it's just me. Maybe I just like games that aren't like good for everyone else. But I feel like this is finally a game that that broke through for me. Uh, I think it's epic. Sure. Does it have flaws? Absolutely. I don't think the game's a 10 out of 10. I just think the game, the game's pros outweigh the cons, in my opinion. Like, I can, like, it, and it hasn't stopped me from playing the game. It's like, the stuff I was worried about this game, damn, is it going to be boring? You know what I mean? And I'm, I've been having fun with it for like, dude, if you check my hours, I think I got like five days of playtime in this game. And a lot of people are like, oh, it's because I'm leaving my Xbox on or leaving my I'm like, bro, I can I share the stats. If I share my stats um, right now, I will tell you how many quests I've completed. I've gotten I probably have at this point I have over I should have almost if not over 200 quests completed. I should have over. um 40 star stations uh visited uh i should have over uh 50 60 planets that i landed on like i i and i've have like several i think i have about maybe 1500 percent uh planets that i surveyed like 100 percent surveyed the whole entire planet like the game the game that offered takes a little bit to do too yes it, it takes a little bit to, to survey a whole planet um i had uh because i find like doing that stuff therapeutic like in between missions i'll get on the mission i'll see how much stuff do i need to get to get the full completion for the planet and then i just start doing it and that's just and next thing you know like a couple hours pass by so yeah i probably could have beaten this game a long time ago but there's certain certain things about the game. the games that i'm not the part of the game that i'm not strong at is you know obviously like i got a couple houses in the game i haven't done much with that i i created seven outposts and i haven't done much of that i I still haven't even figured out how to assign people to those outposts i've only been assigning people to ships uh i've like upgraded ships i bought ships i currently got like over five hundred and eighty thousand credits 
like on hand right now. Um, it's it's been a blast for me, man. It's been an absolute blast, and um, I'm glad. I'm, I'm proud of myself for just just sticking it out and um, playing. I haven't rushed through anything. I've been taking each quest line um, one by one, and I feel now I'm in a comfortable position where I'm going to like you know I can now go straight and complete the uh, main quest line and see what that's about. Uh, I'm at a respectable level. Um, at the time of this uh, uh, podcast, I'm at a level 41. Um, on my way to a 42, probably finish the game off at around a level level 50, pro- possibly. Um, but I think I'm 48. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the reason I leveled up so much is because I have a lot of space combat under me. Mm-hmm. Like I like the game so much, I got a poster. So yeah, nice. Nice. And um, the the space combat levels you up a lot. It does. If you it blow does. up like level sixty people, like you're going, you're getting like four hundred and fifty XP easy. Yeah. No, I blew up. Uh, yeah, that that's what sort of like a cu- I want to say a couple of my levels came straight from space fighting alone. Now I don't have like the amount of hours of space combat or the even this like count. I think I'm still under like. I, I think I'm under, I may, I may be at like 20 ships destroyed. I know I, I'm not, I'm under 30 because I don't have the perk. I have like over a thousand ships I, destroyed. I don't have the highest perk yet for um, piloting. And, and I think to get the highest perk, you have to have at least 30 ships destroyed. I'm at like uh, 20. And then I can finally fly that uh, class C ship uh, that I've gotten like you don't, early in the game. You don't need, class C ships is mainly just bulky ships. Like, you can be fine with, uh, I think, you know, some of the legendary ships in the game, mm-hmm. a lot of them are B uh, because those are more balanced ships. Now, if you want to take damage, have good shields, have great guns, but go slow as fuck, a C is for you. But if you want speed, you probably shouldn't mess with Cs. All right. Yeah, because the, 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 the ship that I'm flying now is the one that I got from uh, the... Uh, pi- um. Free Star Collective, which is the class A, which is uh, it, it is extremely balanced. It's fast. I got three weapon types, um, EMPs, missiles, ballistics. Um, I'm able to do more damage and I've been f- far successful uh, with this ship. Uh, and I haven't felt the need to switch from it, even though I have a couple of ships in my uh, staple, in my, my stable now. So but I've had a blast uh doing some of these uh doing some of these um missions and some of these battles um you want to know here's something crazy um i know Rand described uh, a mission uh, like one of his favorite missions that he's been doing involved him involved like the gravity shutting off and on i haven't came across i haven't came across that mission at all like i've came across yo my favorite you one of my one of my favorite portions of the game it was a it was a mission related to the Crimson Fleet, and you know how uh, you have to fly into the the gas giant to retrieve that ship because they had all that money. Uh, the Gal yeah. the Gal Bank mission. Did you oh, list you're talking about the um the one that's that has like it is in like the storm cloud? Yeah, yeah, that's one of the last missions. Did you listen to all the recordings? In oh, that, that in the legacy, over. yeah, bro. The, but the recordings are depressing, dude. Because you get you're pretty much listening to the dudes were in that ship for about like I think three or four weeks, and they couldn't figure out how to get out. And they all like they ran through all their food, and they all just started. You're literally my yeah, bad. You're, you're literally listening to them dying. Yeah, like, yeah. And, and it, it, it was it was did, sad, did you, bro. It was. <laughs> did you listen to the mate, like the person that was in charge? Yes. Did you listen to his? Where he was like, he's oh, I told what's your name I was here. I'm yeah. good. Yeah. And yeah. then you listen to the recording where she's like, Yeah, I knew you were there. Yeah. You're we're she's, not coming for you. Like, yeah, she yo, that that was messed up, bro. It, it it was a messed up situation, but um but like I had like I listened had, to the last one though. Yeah, I listened to one that was hidden. No, I I found for some reason, I don't know why I started just searching for the recordings. For every because I found one and I it, and I thought the one is taking place right before he dies. Yes, like, there, there's three. Li- he, yeah, 
Yeah. And he's just pretty much like, I get it. I'm not holding no grudges yeah. on home girl. Yeah. I get it. But at the end of the day, just make sure the Crimson Fleet's good. We good. Like, yeah. Just, yeah. He's like, I he's like, I understand. Yeah. And and it yeah, it was like, but you can hear like every time everyone's last recording is like they just kind of met. Did you hear did you listen to the one with the dude who locked himself in the freezer? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it was um I don't know, man. Like this game has a lot going for it, and it just sucks the when you hear people talk about it, they're not talking about these key things, and, and that's why I hate reviews, especially the reviews that focus on the negative because they don't tell you the good; they only tell you uh, the bad. And, and when they when it comes to comparing Starfield to other games, they only tell you what this game doesn't have, doesn't tell you what the game does have, or to only tell you what the game doesn't do. They don't tell you what the game well, I- does do. I did a, a video that's going through the rounds mm-hmm. and um, I went over all of the people who reviewed it really bad, mm-hmm. not sevens. I'm talking about sixes and belows. Mm-hmm. And one of them has only reviewed eight games on Metacritic and Starfield was by far the worst. And there were, uh, and then, you know, the, there's the one that gave it a four. And it's just like, when you look at that individual's recordings, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, do they even like games? Like, I, that point, I, I think, yeah. I think certain people just get into this industry. They were very, you know, they loved games at the time, but then they get to the point where they're not loving it as much anymore. But it's it's the only way they know how to make money. Yeah, and, and you could just feel the bitterness coming from them. Yeah, video. Like the thing is, though, I think they should have a rule though on like. Like I feel like Metacritic should and Metacritic publish is definitely broken. Yeah, Metacritic you shouldn't be able to publish reviews on uh, Metacritic uh, unless you have like at least like I would put like fifty reviews. You, you get fifty. Well, no, see, uh, LordsGaming.net still isn't on Metacritic, and they've been grinding to be on yeah. Metacritic. But they you, still won't let them on them, but, and it, it's kind of frustrating because it's like you're letting people that's clearly abusing. Yeah, you. here's my thing when it comes to the. I don't mind people reviewing a game bad Mm -hmm. if it's genuine. Yeah. If they generally did not like the game, I don't mind that. Mm -hmm. Where I draw the line and I don't like is when people use alternative motives to generate traffic, Mm -hmm. generate, you know, uh, likes on Twitter, Mm -hmm. uh, because now Twitter's paying you. So we got to worry. We we, we got to deal with that too. Yep. That's what I don't like. I don't like people doing that. Uh, you know, if you generally thought this game was a seven out of ten, I disagree. I think it's mainly sitting eight point five, nine out of ten. You know, I, I do think that the Metacritic is is a little on par. Yeah, I, I think I personally think it's an eight seven. If I I was okay you said eight seven eighty seven, you mean or yeah, eight? Okay, eight, seven. yeah. So I, I I personally think I was okay with that. Mm-hmm. But then when you start start seeing these four out of tens, uh, you know all these other outlets that are clearly bombing it to get traffic to the yeah. website. Yeah, you know I went on and looked at literally they. I wish you could bring it up. I can't. Pro- so yeah, bring it up. Bring it up. We, uh, we, we, we got to talk about this. Which one is it? Uh, you want me to just give you the website? Yeah. Like here's my thing. It's like I don't care if you don't like the game. As long as it's it's coming from an actual genuine place, but the moment you start doing stuff just because you want to get a couple extra coins in your mm-hmm. pocket, like that's what I'm like. Come on, man! Like you know, and, and what's funny is like we get the same people. It's like it's just review scores, but then we see these these clear issues with Metacritic. But then when you bring them up, people tell you why do you care so much about Metacritic? Because we should care about Metacritic. We should care that people are manipulating the website. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's Xbox, PlayStation, anyone. We should care. Yeah. No. How many PlayStation games realistically has been robbed of a 90 because of like random websites giving a mad low source for no reason? Like, it, there's so many incidences that this happens. And, you know, I'm sitting here looking at, uh, yeah, I'm, I'll send you this on Twitter. I'm sitting here looking at, you know, there's so many websites. That haven't caught, that uh, haven't put their review out yet. The Verge, um, really? 
Xbox chi- Xbox Y Gen. You know, we'll, we'll probably get a good review score from that. But that is Polygon, CNET, and CNET usually bombs games, don't they? CNET, ah. Uh... All right, you gave me which which one? Because this is the Metacritic website. So let me. I'm, I'm going to let me uh, display. It, that, that's my only thing, man. Like a lot of these people, these people have been working years of their life, and if this game really is that bad, mm-hmm. so be it. I, I, you know, how many times have I told you, Smooth? It's just, it's just a website, Smooth. Don't, don't worry about it. Like I, I've been the number one person that's like, you know, it's Metacritic, yeah. but. How many more games do we got to see that people are clearly taking advantage of this system? And we never get it fixed because you have all these people on Twitter that's just saying it's just someone's opinion. Yeah. No. It, 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 they should be held to a higher standard than just saying it's someone's opinion. No, you're you're absolutely right. And the thing I don't like about uh, when people do that, the disingenuous stuff that they do, is that they're like, oh, why do you care about... Uh, uh, Metacritic uh, scores, but then they turn around and use Metacritic scores to to, to, to diss the game. All right, so I'm, I have uh, Metacritic on top of our screen here. Um, which website should I am I looking for? Uh, well, go down to the bottom. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 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 last three is what I did the video on. Look, a seven. I don't agree with a seven. I don't think I think a seven's wild for a yeah. review on Starfield. Yeah, the gym, it, it the Inquisition with the forty with his bitch, at, um, yeah. bitch so, ass. I'm sorry. I'm like, so you know those last three. Mm-hmm. This game's out of four. You know we won't go too much into the mm-hmm. to, to the gym thing because I've I've been told there's like a lot of alternative motives that's not financial. It was the reason that led to that score. I I let you know you guys could do your own research. Uh, click on the the fifty eight. I think that's it. Click the uh, Mary Station. All this Mary Station. Reviews. Mary yeah, Station. This... Now, now look at look at this 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 individual's review. They've uh, reviewed they've reviewed over three thousand re- games. Mm-hmm. Only ninety three uh, have been negative. Uh, over a thousand have been mixed, and two, over two thousand has been positive. If you look at Starfield fifty eight. It's the least. It's the worst reviewed game that they have done. If you scroll down, can they see it too? Yeah, I'm scrolling down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you scroll down and look at the critic reviews. You, I, I'm already almost on two pages. Literally the lowest game that they have done. Like They rated Oxyfree higher. They rated that GYLT uh, T game higher. System Shock, they gave that an 8. Like uh, Age of Wonders, they. This is literally Starfield is their worst reviewed game. Yeah. They have done in in a minute. I'm I'm back. I'm in July right now, and I still haven't seen a game fall before a five eight. I'm in July. Uh, Since, no, the, it, uh, July twenty first, Crash Team Rumble. They gave a fifty. And okay, so, yeah, um, that I mean, but say, say the game again. Crash Team Rumble. Crash Team Rumble. I would say that the difference of quality between Crash Team Rumble and Starfield are two different games. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, what's funny is they gave Tears of the Kingdom a, a, a perfect score. They gave Boulders Gate a, a perfect, perfect score. score. Yep. And that, that Immortals of Avrium, whatever that game is, yeah. people told me that game is horrible. They rated it higher than Starfield. Yeah. They, yeah. There's like at the end of the day, it's like you can't like we can't force people to re- give a game a good score. But I, I some things I think are just objectively wrong. You know, in no universe that I don't think in any universe that Starfield then, is a, a a fifty, sixty, or seventy. I don't think in any universe it's, it's a forty. Like that. If you look at the the Soul podcast, uh, video game podcast, they mm-hmm. have reviewed nine games the entire time they've been on medical and yeah and, and they they able to like i don't like and, like and, and, and um starfield is the only game that they have had a mix they have literally gave everything greens but starfield for spoken 85 mario and rabbits nine saint fucking rose 8.5 the stray perfect score 10 sword and fairy together forever 8.5 Shadow Gambit, the Curse Cruel, nine. 
Homebody, 7-5. Mm-hmm. They, they reviewed a game they don't even have a Metacritic score because not enough people reviewed it. Yeah. For Spoken, an 8-5. But Starfield, that suck is a 6-5. They gave Saints <laughs> Row an 85. They yeah. gave they gave Stray at 100. These are some simps. Yeah, they that, gave... That's what I'm saying. Like the, It's just not consistent. You mean to tell me that you have reviewed nine games? Because th- that's what I'm saying. If these people generally felt that these games were just bad, yeah. then I'm cool with it. Okay, yeah. that's what you think. But if you could put... If I was a fly in that room when they were reviewing that game, they went into this game looking for shit to bitch about. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe they're... Maybe they're a Boulder's Gate fan. Maybe they're a PlayStation fan. Maybe they're a, a a Zelda fan. Because keep in mind, it's not just about PlayStation fanboys. There's other games that people strategically want to try to stop from getting the the hype that they feel has been robbed from another area. They want they're looking at that game of the year at the end of the year. Oh shit! You know they they gave Boulder's Gate and they gave Zelda a ten out of ten, but Starfield they give a six five. Makes no sense to me. That's what I'm saying. Like, like you give the game a seven. I think I'm gonna question your 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 what you think is good game. I'm gonna question your morals in terms of gaming. You know what you what you vibe with when it comes to games. But anything below a seven, I think there were just alternative motives. Now, if there isn't, and people just generally thought this game was, you know, garbage, then okay, you know. Slap, slap that five on it, but I just don't. I think it's the latter. I just don't. And you know, I know, you know, we we have a a very interesting people watching us on a uh, planet Xbox, and I'm sure a lot of you, you you guys are celebrating. You know, even though this game still reviewed very well, I will agree. An eight five, it, it, it's it, it wasn't what Microsoft needs. And at the end of the day, what's that really mean? You know, you can't really stop everything. It just sucks, man. It sucks that they worked their y- years of, of their get their ass off for this game, and you have people that is deliberately taking advantage of the review system just to to prove a point, to prove a political point, to mm. prove a gaming politic point. Yeah. There's just so many things that they could have done, and, and I get annoyed when I bring it up. People just say, "Add it." It's just Metacritic. Yeah, it's just someone else's opinion. When we should be holding, not the reviewer account because they're just doing what's best for them we should be holding metacritic for weaponizing for giving them the tools to weaponize their reviews yeah no you're absolutely right and um the thing uh, about this whole thing you know i think i still think starfield deserve a game of the year nomination i I still believe it'll get that i think the game is why is it the one game of the year still I, it's, it's still possible. I mean, I, I still think they could win. I, I would say this is a really bad year to try to get game of the year. It's a very stacked year. And I, I would say there's multiple games that could get it over it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I would say that regardless of this game doesn't even get nominated. I think he'll get nominated. I don't know if he'll win it. I would say the odds of Starfield winning is like 30, 70. Uh, because I do think that Boulder's Gate is, you know, like I, 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 th- I think, um, like I think Boulder's Gate's going to win because this is what like it's it's the it's the it's a God of War effect, right? Remember when God of War came out, it was the highest rated game, but it lost that Elden Ring um, because God of War is just we we've been there, done that. I think Zelda. People are trying to say Final Fantasy 16 is a better game. I I can't. I'm not going to say anything about Final Fantasy because people get overly sensitive. I don't see based off what. I've seen, I mean, I, I can't judge the whole game based on the demo, but um, if Final Fantasy is uh, a game of the year nominee, was Devil May, if, was Devil May Cry 5 a game of the year nominee? I don't remember. Because that um, was a really good game. Good graphics, same gameplay type. I don't um, think that 16 deserves to be up there with... Uh, I'm the, pretty the sure I'll get nomination, game. but I don't think it's... Um, I don't even think it deserves to be nominated. I'm gonna be real with you. Like, look, it, it, it's it just if you strip the Final Fantasy thing out and stop making me socialize associate the the brand with the game, then it would be a different story. But when you throw the word Final Fantasy on there, mm-hmm. I have different expectations. And to me, 
they didn't meet those expectations at all, and I don't believe it deserves to be up there. Yeah. Now, Spider-Man, there's a great chance that game's going to be there because mm -hmm. I have a feeling that Insomniac, they do nothing but deliver quality, and I think they're going to do no different with, with this, mm -hmm. with Spider-Man 2. Uh, Spider-Man, like I said, that uh, Starfield, the only thing that I'm looking at to bump Starfield out of Game of the Year contender is Diablo and Resident Evil 4. Mm. And I think it's going to, I think right now, and I don't know if you would agree, Smooth, I would say Boulder's Gate 3 mm -hmm. and Zelda are in there for fucking sure. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I don't know where the other, what the, I don't know where the other four. So, you know, Spider Man, most likely, we have to see the game. Maybe Insomniac drops the ball in some way, some way shape, or I don't know. I doubt it. But I'm putting that in there. Already, Spider Man, uh, Spider Man, Boulder's Gate, Zelda. There's three more that's left. What do you think those three could be? Uh, Starfield, um, Diablo, and um, Hogwarts. But they usually all they usually try to give an indie game that that too. All so right, do so you what think about that they break that? They either they break, break it that? or you put maybe or you probably put Sea of Stars in there. But I think they if it doesn't deserve it. Remember, these game uh, years have been relatively weak. This is a very strong year. And I think what should be a sure shot should be honestly Baldur's Gate 3, Zelda, Starfield. Um, I can't I'm not I, I can't speak for Spider-Man because it's not out yet. It, 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 and everybody's shooing it in. It's not out yet. Um, but let's be real here. I think we could. It'll probably get not. It'll ball. probably get nominated. But my thing is, start if if games if if games like Ghost of Tsushima and um and Death Stranding um can be nominated and get a ton of votes, you know, with an 82, 83 Metacritic's uh, score, Starfield should be good enough not only to guarantee a nomination but to win it, especially if a game like It Takes Two um uh, could. Uh, when Game of the Year at 89, when it was in the cat nomination list with games that scored higher than it. Um, so, me personally, uh, like, I'm, I'm ready to destroy. There's, my thing is, is like, for example, I know Spider-Man is going to be a good game, but I don't see them doing anything drastically th th different that makes Spider-Man 2, like, maybe a, like a better game than the first game in Miles Morales. You know what I mean? I don't think I don't but, know how drastically you can change it. You know what I mean? And my thing is, if it's just as good as the other ones with just better graphics, um, is it truly a game of the year contender? Part of me thinks that Jeff will give Starfield that that spot just because he don't want to smoke on Twitter. I don't know why. Part of me feels like that. <laughs> Well, if it's to be said about the, the gaming board, the true boards, remember, isn't there's a lot of people that are like, I know, um, you know, Phil Spencer, there's a lot of people that are on the board that will, um, of the nominations, and there's a lot of industry people actually like Starfield. Um, a lot of industry, yeah, there's actually a lot of people, a lot of industry people. So it's like, even though you got these butt munches on Twitter, like, you know, think they're speaking, it's like, they're responsible for all the negative banter o o on the game, but uh, amongst the people that are actually playing it, you know what I mean? There's a lot of people that enjoy the game, and a lot of industry people are, are enjoying uh, the game. Uh, also, when it comes to other developers and, and stuff like that, people are liking the game. The game got a lot of people's respect. Sure, is, is it flawless? No, but somebody said it in their review, said it best. It's a flawed masterpiece, and, like, like I... I, I I know they're going to continue to work on this game and stuff like that, but this is like one of the first content complete games we got in, in a while. Like, did like when you play Starfield, do you feel like the game was incomplete or missing of content, right? You didn't feel that no. way, right? Now, this game is, is, is full. It's healthy. It's a very healthy game um, that has a lot. And, and the, the fact that I'm having all this fun and once I get through the game and don't, it, I could only imagine what they can do with expansions and how they can and that stuff can be handled uh they have like a a, a blank uh canvas because they got all these planets where they can literally have a brand new you know 20 hour adventure take place on yeah you know what i mean so i i i, I rock with this game man it, it's like i can't say it enough personally 
Um, if the year was to end today, Starfield would easily be my game of the year. I know there's going to be a, a couple games that come out that I'm going to like heavily. Like, I'm going to like Spider-Man. I'm going to like... Um, I might like the next Assassin's Creed. I'm not too sure. I don't think I'm going to care for Alan Wake uh, that much. Um, and I, I'm satisfied uh, with uh, what we got. Could it have been better? A couple improve, like, you know what I mean? I think if, uh, first order of business for them, you know, fixed uh, the loading time speeds, um, allow for unlock FPS toggle. I think those are a, a couple key things. But other than that, man, I'm not mad at this game. Um, I'm not mad at this game. It's a really, really good game. It's it's a solid experience, and you know, regardless how you feel about the Metacritic score, I do think it was the kind of caliber game that Microsoft truly needed. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, if I was Microsoft, it's like I've said a couple times, I would be looking at Hellblade, Avowed, Fable, mm -hmm. all the uh, you know Indiana Jones we're about to talk about here soon. Yep, I would be looking at those titles of like, I need you to come out. You don't have to be fantastic like Chef's Kiss type of shit, mm -hmm. but I need you to come out. And wow, people. Yeah, I think um, and and, and it's good to like uh, there's a couple you know, quick tidbits like you know Todd Howard had an interview. They're trying to snag some inter information out of you know about Indiana Jones. He confirmed that yeah we'll we'll, you know, we'll hear more next year about it. Um, and when you say we'll hear more next year, are you thinking E3 or the next Xbox developer direct? E3. E3. I I don't feel like they just announced. Uh, they might because they've been trying to do more with that mm -hmm. platform but I, I do feel like part of me is like you'd be stupid not to have some form of you know i don't think that they just like give a direct like first gameplay yeah. of indiana jones yeah like that, oh, that's a you. big announcement. i got you uh, yeah 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 you could show that mm -hmm. off by itself maybe maybe that's no nah, i don't even think it'll be at the video game awards you know that that's an E three type of caliber move. Okay. Well, whatever the hell E three is these days. And um, the other thing we got was it Pete Hines that confirmed that Elder Scrolls six is in full production now. Yes. Awesome. When do you think we get that game? Twenty twenty six, twenty twenty seven. Is it Todd Howard's last game before he retires? Yes. Okay. Um. There was a, C, a CNBC. I, oh, let me let me take that back. He, I think they'll give him a uh, a consulting gig. He'll still be part of the studio, but he won't be so much hands on anymore. Okay. Uh, CNBC. Uh, they you know pissed off a couple people with the dumb questions they asked. They asked Todd Howard why isn't Starfield optimized for PC. And he said, he said, your PCs are trash. This is a, upgrade your PC. Uh, I watched the Digital Foundry video today and they, uh, you know, did a deep dive. I guess uh, Starfield has some e uh, issues on PCs, um, especially NVIDIA based graphics cards. Good on AMD graphics cards. Um, and people are blaming the partnership there, which is uh, probably the case. I think that's valid. Yeah. I think that's valid. You know, most likely there was some stuff going on there. Uh, you can't blame AMD. AMD just trying trying to make their stuff look good. You know, yeah. that's that's Bethesda and Microsoft for taking that kind of uh, arrangement. They should never have done that. No, no. And, people can take arrangements with PlayStation. The people they can take arrangements with but, freaking no, AMD. But I, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm saying if you want to blame someone, Microsoft and Bethesda are the people to blame. And, yeah. You know, you 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 can still feel like someone is. is is responsible you could still be wrong because yeah. i do think that you know if if amd was willing to help with certain things financially maybe marketing that's amd's thing and you know it goes both ways you know it it, it is what it is at this point you know when we we've seen enough of these to know that this is just how the industry works it's no different than you know playstation going out there and dropping mad money and just securing all these these deals to make sure all these games only come out to their platform you know, unfortunately, it's just the industry. And, you know, I don't agree with it. I think especially when it comes to, to PC stuff, you know, maybe you shouldn't be doing that. But what am I supposed to do? Am I, uh, you know, I, okay, I, I'm not going to say that. Uh, but, you know, th things, things, 
things is, is what it is. You know, are we just not going to play Starfield? I do think that Pete Himes should have, with, with an arrangement like that, maybe you shouldn't have said, no, it was Todd Howard. Maybe you shouldn't have said, your PCs are trash. Get AMD. That's pretty much what he said. Uh, <laughs> um, they also tried to trip up Phil Spencer with the exclusivity. They tried to pry him to say that these games are uh, Xbox exclusive. He was like, yeah, so... Um, um, so is it, is it exclusive or like, or is it coming to place? I forgot what the question he asked. And then Phil Spencer says, you know, our games are available on Xbox Series X as PC and through cloud. He said, so it's exclusive. He was like, you can play. Our <laughs> and he got frustrated, man. So it's like, why is it? Why is uh, Microsoft Xbox the only console maker that get pressed about a game being partially exclusive to its box, whereas PlayStation and Nintendo can thrive with having literally straight console exclusive, not even PC, not on PC, not on this, not on that. And it's nobody questions. Nobody's questioning, hey, so Spider-Man is not going to come out on Xbox, you know? All right. Now, nobody's asking that question. No professional is asking that question. You don't have to go past, you know, I know people are going to say, well, it's because they're buying off you know, publishers and they're buying these uh, massive amounts of studios that that's not the case because I remember when Tomb Raider was announced as an Xbox exclusive, the internet flipped the hell out too at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, what it was like two years later, maybe it was around the same time Final Fantasy VII Remake mm -hmm. was announced as a PlayStation exclusive yeah. and no one said nothing. It's like, that's the way the cookie crumbles and people was like, well, that's just makes sense. Final Fantasy 13 and 15 both were coming to Xbox mm -hmm. or already out at the time. Yeah. Especially 13. 13 had three. Two, it had the base game and two spinoffs or sequels to that game. And they all were on Xbox. So you had at least six years. And maybe that maybe it's not that many years, but you had a good amount of Final Fantasies coming to, to Xbox with PlayStation. Mm -hmm. So you can't tell me that. I have to just expect random Final Fantasies to be secured off of the play uh, of the Xbox platform. Yeah, you know, it just unfortunately, for some reason, when Xbox does stuff, it, it's just it's not accepted. And you know, they have to constantly validate why they're they have to constantly validate what they're doing with the the stuff they buy. Yeah, and it, and it's unfortunate and unfair. So I got uh, uh, one final uh, question before we close this out because I got to get ready to go. Um, What's now that Starfield is here? Is on people are playing it. Six million players, uh, two hundred sixty plus thousand concurrent players on Steam. Uh, it, it surpassed a hundred uh, one million uh, concurrent players across all platforms. Six million players total. Um, what's the next Xbox game? Now, I, I don't know if any game's going to reach the hype of Starfield, but what's the next major one that is going to see this cycle where there's an anticipation and then there's a group of haters and, and journalists ready to, like, stop whatever uh, success is coming for it? What's the next Fable. game that's going to come on the screen? You think Fable? Yeah, Fable. Nothing. Well, I mean, what else could be that? I, I don't think Hellblade's going to get... Now, don't get me wrong. These games are going to be good, mm -hmm. hopefully. You know, um, I do think that they're going to be good. I don't know, like, mm -hmm. to what demand or what caliber, but I think they're both going to deliver what they promised on. It's just I don't see them as, like, a Starfield caliber type of game. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, for the most part, we could say Starfield was one of the most hyped games that has came out in a lot in a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, so fable because right now we might not sense that hypeness on fable but the closer we get to the release date i think you'll start seeing that and maybe perfect dark i think perfect dark could generate that too yeah i think uh i don't know i know i know hellblade 2 is going to i don't it's not gonna unless, it depends on how big they make the game but fable but with fable you think is what that's you think it's 2024 or it's 2025 I think we'll see Fable next year, and it'll come out the year after. Okay. All right. So, all right. So, and what's likely for next year for Xbox? Obviously, is Hellblade Avowed, and I think Hellblade Avowed. Maybe Clock is is Clockwork Revolution probably no, due that, for next year. That game's probably not anytime soon. 
maybe the compulsion game. Okay, but Clockwork is pretty like I saw. I feel like we saw a lot that looked like actual tangible stuff, though. I think their big game next year is either going to be Hellblade or Vowed. I do think we're going to see random stuff. Don't get me wrong; there are a couple de- couple games that Microsoft is cur- is making currently in development that's announced and not announced. That I've been told that you know Microsoft don't even know when these games are coming out, and it's not necessarily off of like a development cycle. It's there's so many games that are are, are settling to be ready around the same time mm-hmm. that they might have to just naturally internally delay games just so they don't over like crowd each other. Yeah. Well, we'll see, man. I'm looking forward to it. I know uh Forza's coming in uh next month. I know people got access to the game uh already, so we should be seeing some previews next week. Uh, but you know, people are already, you know, revving up their engines to hate on that game. Uh, but that's another, you know, major AAA from Microsoft and Xbox that's going to come out. It's going to do uh, good. I'm predicting mid to high 80s for that game. It's going to be the first game, uh, racing game to have to be 4K 60 plus ray tracing in game and not uh, in or into replay mode. And I got a lot of PlayStation fanboys jealous right now. So they're really kind of just badgering the game, saying it doesn't look good. But, you know, people are playing it and, you know, we'll hear more. But Attic, man, thanks again. You know, great episode playing Xbox episode 16. I'm going to go meet up with Jack Move and BG. And, uh, well, and we should have Plan X, uh, Weapon Will uh, tomorrow, but, uh, or today, whenever you're watching this podcast. But, uh, Attic, you got anything to say before we head out? Um, I think that. One of the things that you should like really be looking out is uh, IOP is going to be having some content drop here soon, so mm-hmm. definitely be looking out for that. I think the I think the embargo is Monday, so you know look out for that. I, and I'm not I don't I'm pretty sure I'm allowed to say what game it is, but I don't I'm not 100 percent sure, so I'm not going to. But I'm sure if you guys have half a brain, you can understand what game it is. So uh, you know be looking out for that. I only delivered four videos this week (laughs) because when i got back from pax west Mm -hmm. i was just so mentally drained monday yeah i was like this i gotta take a day on me so you know but the the four videos i delivered this week you know i I would say they they were mad successful like one almost hit 10 grand one hit seven grand like you know i appreciate anyone that stops on my channel and supports me Mm -hmm. like i i really appreciate that you guys have no idea how much that means to me you know, I've been in this grindy thing since 2013, 14, and I and to be honest with you, I kind of gave up on the the personal YouTube shit. You know what I'm saying? A couple times. And yeah, it, but you know, I'm finally getting a flow of how I make videos, of how I deliver content, mm-hmm. and people seem to gravitate towards it. And there's still stuff I want to do. I want to do collab videos with like Kid Smooth, ACG. I still got plans I want to do. We did. You're the only person I've ever did a collab video with. A long time ago. Yeah, we got to do more. What video was that for? That was uh, what studios we want Microsoft to buy. That was before they bought um, the people who made Dead uh, Demon Souls. Gotcha. Blue yeah. Point. Gotcha. All right, cool. Well, man, Attic, appreciate it. Thank you guys for subscribing. I'll be back on YouTube with regular content uh, fairly soon once I beat Starfield. And I should have a video coming out on. Uh, uh on monday tuesday um about another new game so you guys as always xbox is the best box i am the best bot good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe we are out of here peace peace guys starfield steamed that